How are you? Good. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so. So last week, if um, you joined the other class, remember? So um, we we turned that into your lecture as well. It, uh, because that actually meant for your lab. But since it's just after the holiday, the lab is not prepared. Um, we'll continue lab next week, and we're going to continue with hormones. So I think you have like maybe two or three more labs to go. Then we are done with this semester for the lab. And then we have to wait right at the end of the semester with the other group because usually they will make me teach the other groups as well for the instrumentation. Um, so you have about four weeks. Lab, 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 not lecture. So what are you going to do? Rombongan sekolah? <laughs> okay, so we can continue today uh, with a um, lesson about phytohormones. Yay! Phytohormones, some people call it phytohormones, some call it um, PGR, plant growth regulators, but the concept is the same. It's, it's, it's a compound something that is produced in the body to excite or to trigger specific responses. Do you have hormones? Where's your hormone? In the body. Okay. So do you have hormone? You said yes. Are you hormonal? Are you sure? Are you hormonal? Are you hormonal? Yes. No, yes. No. How can you say you are not hormonal? But you say you, you got hormones. <clears throat> okay. I know that you've, you've learned your um, biology, your human biology. Eh, tak pakai cap. That's really. Sejuk aja kepala. So, Serabut pagi ni. I was I was talking to people at the port because um trying to import some hydroponic structure. If you are lucky, the hydroponic will be here during your semester time. Then you, you can learn uh, some new technology from China. We'll put it um, at the farm. <coughs> um, where was I? I think I'll put it up. Um. So, you've learned about your hormones in your biology lessons, but that is human hormones, right? So, what, what, are, what, what kind of hormones do you have? Uh, <laughs> Electron. Estrogen. It's called estrogen. No, no actually, this, this is good. Number one, you need to correct your understanding. Actually, there is no concept of male or female hormones. You got estrogen, you got testosterone. Live with it. But we're talking about ratios. Okay? Guys, you got estrogen as well. So there, is, there needs to be some amount of balance in your body. Otherwise, kau jadi sajat. Kau jangan nak gembira. Kau pun need to have some balance between your testosterone and your estrogen. Otherwise, variable. <laughs> yeah. So this is a general um, male, female characteristic hormone, or we call it the sex hormone. But still, there are some hormones specifically present in um, a female that you shouldn't be having. Especially hormones that involved in um, ovulation and stuff. To start with, you don't have ovaries. So what kind of things need to come out even if you have the hormones? Okay. But the concept of hormones in human can be somewhat different. It, 
different, not in the sense of function, specific function, but how it is being delivered throughout the body. Okay, you'll see in a bit. We'll see, we'll see uh, the, the introduction first. So, uh, hormones, there are many names. All of these mean the same. Plant growth substance, plant hormones, uh, phytohormones, they are regulators. Okay, meaning that they are not necessarily present at all time. And in fact, the concentration, the abundance of the hormones substance can vary throughout the day. Sometimes you have more, sometimes you have less. Okay, and sometimes you don't have it altogether. You only got it at a certain time. Okay, hormones, the other concept you need to understand Hormones do not always mean to excite or to increase something, to trigger the happening of an event. Sometimes hormones can have inhibitory effect, to inhibit, to slow down, to stop a process. Okay? Can you imagine if you don't stop growing? Now, what's the age you stop from growing height-wise? 21. He's very sure he stopped growing at 21. 14, even quicker. <laughs> so, because of your hormones, you stop from growing. You stop from becoming taller and taller year after year. If you, if you don't stop from growing, what's going to happen to you now? You are no different than bamboo. Bamboo, look at bamboo. Did you know that bamboo is the fastest growing plant? It, it can grow like 10, 15 centimeters overnight if it's raining. Very, very fast. If you have a bamboo shoot and you just fix your eyes on the bamboo shoot, you can actually see the bamboo is growing. It's, it's, it's lengthening. <laughs> okay? So, hormones needs to stop some physiological process as well. It's from the word, uh, Greek word, hormone, means to excite. So there are many different kinds of hormones or chemicals. These chemicals, at the beginning of knowledge, they don't really call it hormones. The, the terminologies came a bit later. To group, there, there are many compounds in the body, in your body, in plant's body. So apparently some, some compounds or substances, they fit into this characteristic to regulate, to inhibit, to stimulate. So they are put under hormones. Some compounds, you cannot put it under the hormones definition. For example, ascorbic acid. Is it a hormone? You know ascorbic acid? <sighs> I, I just mentioned it, ascorbic acid. Uh, maybe, I think last week, was it last week? I'm very sure I mentioned it sometime uh, this semester. Ascorbic acid, what is it? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. So is it a hormone? Oh, you yourself call it vitamin, right? Why is it not a hormone? Why can't ascorbic acid, by the way, ascorbic acid is the science name for vitamin C. <laughs> All vitamins have its own science name, scientific name. Pretty much like your plant, you know, like coconut. What's the scientific name for co coconut? And you are in the faculty of agriculture and you do not know that. Don't you think it's worrying? Did you know your botany? Have you, have you, have you came about with coconut samples? No? You, you didn't find out about coconut sample, the name of it on the table of the bench in the lab while you are learning about the leaf, the front of coconut, or maybe the flower of the coconut. You belong to this faculty. There are about 55 common crop names that you need to know 
the botany name of them okay if you do not know that actually you are not agriculture student because these are the universal names such that you know right scientific name the function of it what's the function of scientific name <coughs> you got you got two types of name okay you got scientific name you got common name and there are many ways to call it actually scientific name botanical name latin name common name um conventional name or vernacular name these all mean the same so like vitamin c it's called ascorbic acid what about vitamin e It, it looks worrying, okay? The, the 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 amount of you do not know. You know this this is like the basic science. But when I say basic science, regardless of your course, you should know this because it's in your body. <clears throat> Anybody know the science name for vitamin A? You know what? You would be very sad if you if you met me when I was like ten years old. Ten years old. What standard is that? Standard four. Maybe it's a good, it's a blessing. In the past, you didn't didn't have all this computer and social media. You only start with books and newspaper. You've got no choice but to read. All right, we'll come back to that in a bit uh, about all those names later. Okay, so um. Hormones, they are growth regulators and also acting as signaling molecule. <clears throat> so the terminologies, one of the terminologies used is phytohormones, term in 1948. So that is relatively new on the time scale. So before that, hormones didn't, didn't exist. Is that what we're talking about? No, it's just the concept of it. Then people understand some things can be grouped together you have a sea of people in the room you can categorize these people to male and female tall and short how how else can you categorize people what the guilt the gale you use characteristic to group similar qualities individuals together so this is what the concept of hormones okay there are many compounds in 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 the plants thousands of compounds millions of substance probably so some are grouped together into this phytohormone so under the phytohormone you will see there are categories this actually not really the name of the hormones in plant, but the classes of hormones: oxin, gibberellin, ethylene, FCC acid, cytokinin, and so on. Classes of hormones, because under each of this class, there are specific names of hormones. For example, under gibberellin, the name of a hormone class in plant. There are, I think, about maybe 55 different hormones. So scientists label it as GA1 until GA55. For example, GA stands for gibberellic acid. Okay, so get the concept correct. These are not the name of the hormones, it's about the classes of hormones. And you'll see the members of, of each class in a bit. Okay, so by now you should be able to distinguish the main difference or what differentiate between plant hormones and animal hormone. So unlike um, animal hormone, plant hormones are not produced in specialized tissue. In you, we 
you're not animal, but you can represent animal. Where are your hormones produced in your body? Where? Where are your hormones produced? Yeah, lah. Pelanjar masing dia apa? Pelanjar masing dia apa? Itu nama kelanjar. Contoh kelanjar. Kelanjar. What do you call it in English? Plants. Plants. Ke learn. Cha. Number one, plants do not produce hormones in specific structure like glands. So there are no oxid glands, gibberellin glands in plant. Okay? No, there's no such thing. That only happens in you. Okay? And secondly, plant hormones do not have definite target. The second point here. Do not have definite target area. So... For example, your um, she asking uh, this to, to to the ladies because they have more hormones than you do. What hormones responsible to release your ovum? You should know that it's in your body. What, what, what's the name of that hormone? Luteinizing? Okay, there, there are a bunch. So one of them is LH, luteinizing hormones. So, um, do you know luteinizing hormone? No? Do you have luteinizing hormone? No, she doesn't have luteinizing hormone. <laughs> that, that's worrying. <laughs> do you have luteinizing hormone? No? What's the proof? <laughs> so that hormone, luteinizing hormone, FHH, follicle stimulating hormone. Kau ada benda tu, kau kena ada. Kalau kau tak ada, kau dah kau dah join lah majlis majlis mengaji petang-petang tu. Tak, tak, tak mampu buat apa dah duduk, 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 duduk kat situ je lah ya, 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 ya you still have that you still have that, that's why you still have your ovary active and so on you know, this is the primary time prime time for your reproduction plants do not have that okay there is meaning that one hormone can have multiple effects in various organs in plant Take a class of hormone, for example, oxin. Oxin can have effects on the leaves, which is an organ in plant. It makes the leaves to grow, elongate, and get bigger and bigger. And also, the same hormone, oxin, can have impact on the other organs, such as root. Root and leaf, that's quite far away, and they are in different regions altogether. But the, simil the same hormones have the impacts as well, okay? So it's not, it's not similar like you. If you put your luteinizing hormone, your FSH hormone into him, what's going to happen? Well, he needs to have higher estrogen first before anything can happen, okay? She looks, he, he, I, I call, already call him and she, right? He looks worried. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, okay. Please remember this. There are many classes of plant hormones, but at your level, these are the hormone classes that you need to know. Please find a way to memorize this. Or maybe you, you can create a formula. <clears throat> Um, do you have do you have any formula in your head to remember something? Remember, I was talking about the redox reaction. I'll give you a formula to remember memorize it. What was it? What was it? The redox. Oil rate. Okay. Oil means what? 
Oxidizing is less. Aku tak cakap macam tu. Oxidizing is losing. Losing what? Electron. Lepas tu, Rick. Rick stands for what? Reduction is gaining electron. I'll give you three minutes. Can you come up with a mnemonic like that for this? Try. Oxygen, cytokinin, uh, ABA, gibberellin, and ethylene. Not gases, okay? Ethylene. So, A, C, A, G, E. You can work in your group. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. Come up with that so that you'll remember this forever. Oh, sure, I'll create one as well. Kalau aku create, mesti nampukkan bukan, kan? It can be in English, it can be in Malay, or any language that you feel comfortable with. Just don't make, don't make it look obscene. You can work in your group. Three minutes, you have until 8.37. What group you are in? Oi. Group apa? Ha? Macam mana dia? What group are you? You ada group? All group got, got marker? What is the other group do not have marker? Can you give to the other group? Don't main telefon apa? Bagi ni. Ha. Ha. Okay, once you're done, um, write your formula on the board. And we'll pick one so that we use that for the rest of the semester. Or maybe forever. What now? Suka hilang. I don't have tissue. Tak nak pakai ni. No? Tolong pergi tengok. Curi kat kelas belah. Two minutes. Two, two minutes left. If you if you are done, come to the front, write it. Write your, your the name of your group as well. It can be in Malay, it can be in English. It, it can look it can sound as ridiculous as you want it to be. Doesn't matter. Thank <laughs> you. 
can you write in the middle here one long line and then at the end put bracket your group name Are you done? Go, go right. Are you done? Go right, go right, go right to represent the group. Okay, one is done. That's only one. What's the other one? Come on. Okay, one minute left. One minute left. Come up with something. <coughs> put put the marker here, okay, when you're done. I need the marker back. I'm so poor. Got no markers. Can I put this word about me? <laughs> come on, come on, other groups. Use use your marker. You you got your own marker, right? Write your name, the group name at the end. What about the other two? Come on, come on, quick, 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 quick. <laughs> Oh, okay, thank you. Um, kejap lagi kau ada kat lab ke? Ada. Kat kejap lagi. Untuk discuss hari Rabu punya eksperimen. Uh, kalau okay. kalau kau tak sib kalau kau sibuk, uh, boleh buat esok pagi. Kena buat esok pagi untuk discuss. Biasa apa je. Nak nak hari ke nak esok? Esok dah ada. Boleh. Kalau esok pukul 10 lah kot. Boleh. 10. Saya. Ha, esok. Okey dah. Okey. One, two, three, four, five. Where's the other one? Helenthus, mitochondria, banana, case. What's the other one? Cepat. Cepat. Bapa, so what's your group? Cepat lah. Tunggu apa? It's a simple task. Kindergarten kids can do it. Cepat, cepat. You're already over the time. Another minute, you are losing point. I'm looking at the clock. Baba, <coughs> so how many of you in the group? How many? How many of you? Ah, cepat. Eh, put the markers over here. I see, put the markers over here, guys. When you're done, put the markers over there.
On the table, on the table. <coughs> Apa lah, susah sangat. It's a simple activity, simple task. I need to, to turn on the light for a bit. So we got five. Thank you. We got five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now we are talking about making a mnemonic. Okay, mnemonic is a very useful technique. Mnemonic to memorize. Number one. Before you create a mnemonic, you need to understand, is that a sequence or not? Sometimes, the sequence is there for a reason. Because the first one can be the first thing that happened in a long chain, or the first one is actually the most abundant. So, look at that. What's the first one? It should be oxygen. What else? Cytokinin. What else? Oh. <coughs> um, I think I need to change this. Um, it should be it should be this way. This 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 thing can actually interchangeable. Cytokinin and gibberly. Okay. Usually, this is the sequence. Why? Because auxin is the most function. And then it's followed by cytokine or gibberellin, which kind of have similar impact on the plants. And then abscisic acid and ethylene. So that should be the sequence. I'm surprised nobody asked me, is that the, the sequence you want to follow or not? <coughs> the rainbow color. If you have the mnemonic of rainbow color, do you have any mnemonic for rainbow color? What? Michael Jackson kisses his brother. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson kisses brother. His brother. His brother. Apa tu? Tak ingat lah belakang. Ni ada <laughs> if it doesn't follow sequence, is that correct? You make brother kiss Michael Jackson in the formula. Is that correct for the rainbow rainbow color? Mana boleh betul? Rainbow color got sequence. What what color has to go first? Merah. <sighs> Merah. Rainbow color in Malay. Michael Jackson kisses his brother in Uganda. <laughs> Michael Jackson kisses his brother in Uganda. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. <coughs> You see, it's very important to know the sequence, okay? Because the sequ you cannot just suddenly put brother kiss Michael Jackson first. It's not blue first. It's always red first. So, number one, wet the money. Make sure that you got the um, the sequence correct. So, let's see. So, which one is the best? Number one. Number two, Pak Abu, oh ni cinta Abu Gilgil, you okay. Number two, Pak Abu cari guni. I do not know how, how that, that can be the mnemonic. <laughs> Number three, child are growing. That's grammatically incorrect. Child is singular. Child are growing. Children. Children are growing absolutely epic, okay. 
Number four, a cat go goes it again. Okay, okay. Hmm. Which one? So, I just want to see who who thinks this 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 is the way to go. Number one. No. <laughs> Even the the own group don't agree. How about number two? Uh, raise your hand. I, I want to see. That's only two. No. Number three. <clears throat> no. Number four. Cat goes. Cat, cat go to eat again. Number five. So nobody. Uh, <laughs> please. Hey, please raise your hand. I just again. Number one. No? Who who agree with number one? We want to use it. <laughs> Even the group member I don't want to, to, to admit. Number two. <laughs> number three. No, you, you can raise your hand more than once. It's fine. Number three. Nobody wants number three? Just 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 three. Number four? Number four, cat goes to eat again. Okay, number five. <laughs> so it's number four and number five actually. Okay, again. Uh, number three, no, one, two, three, out. <laughs> four and five. Four and five. Okay, who wants to use, no, who agree with number four? Okay, who agrees with number five? That's uh, about the same. That's about the same. Oh, again, number number four. Okay, number five. Oh, okay, means the door. So number four wins. Yay! <laughs> A cat goes to eat again. A cat goes to eat again. Oxin, cytokinin, gibberellin, ethylene, abscess acid. Acid. Okay. I hope you remember sampai the day kau masuk lubang. Okay? Good. <coughs> All right, let's continue. No, I want you to do this because um, Ramai Joe, even if you are postgraduate, you don't remember this group of hormones. Okay. Okay, some hormones are, I've mentioned this already, they are acting as promoters. Some are regarded as inhibitors. Okay. So, so I hope you know the concept already, so I don't have to explain further into that. <clears throat> What's more important now is to learn about the first group of... So we're going to learn about auxin today because it's a very, very prominent hormone. It has lots of impacts on the plants and you're going to deal with it a lot in agriculture as well. Right, so auxin. So it was proposed by Charles Darwin. Um, you know, do you know Charles Darwin? Who who was he? Whose uncle was he? Charles Darwin was the father of evolution. Okay. Evolution is a theory. The guy who came up with the evolution theory, Charles Darwin. Okay. Is still still around? This uncle? No. No. Where is he? <laughs> I I got to spend uh like like a week um in his home when I was doing my my li. You know you got li, right? So I when I did li, that my my employer made us to to work in his home for for about a week. It's a it's a big home like a land and stuff so he did all his experiment there he got like 10 10 children 
so many children, he actually created um, a slide. You know, slide in the playground from from the second floor of the house all the way ground to the to 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 to, to the um, yard uh, at the back. So it's a it's a very very <laughs> lavish setting uh, English home. Okay. So um, what about it? <clears throat> so in this in this um, his experiment, he discovered that the coleoptile state coleoptile is the protective shift or cap for the plumule. You know when when a seed is germinating, two things coming out: plumule and radical. So the the, the tip that cover uh, plumule is called coleoptile. Okay. So he observed that coleoptile didn't bend towards unilateral light. Unilateral means light that coming from one direction. Okay. So that is the experiment. So light coming from this way, unilateral. This is the coleoptile, okay? The tip of it. For the control, meaning that no treatment whatsoever grow naturally, the ceiling is bending towards the light. But when the tip is removed, the, the seedling is it's not growing at all. It just stay straight. When the tip is covered with a opaque cap, opaque cap means cap that is not allowing any light to get in. Straight growth as well. But when the tip is covered with a transparent cap, it is following the control. And then the cap is moved to the base of it, following the control. And the tip is separated by gelatin block. This means that um, the, the tip of the seedling is cut, deca decapitated, and then placed with a agar block. So you have it this way, and then you cut it. So you got this part. You've got this part. So now, this mid part is, is connected with a agar. So this, when it's being placed this way, it follows the control as well. But when the tip is separated by my car, this similar setting, but using the mica. Mica is a type of mineral, okay? Meaning that um, it's not porous. Agar, porous, meaning that substance from one side can pass through it to the other side. You can't do it with mica, okay? It's pretty much waterproof. Okay, so what does it tell you? Very quickly, it shows that there is a signal coming out from the Coleoptile. So this is the coleoptile. There must be something here that is causing the seedling to bend toward the light, causing what we call as positive phototropism. Remember you learned about tropism? Geotropism, phototropism, gravitropism, hydrotropism, and so on. So this is post positive tropism. So they, this is how it started. And then they conducted further testing and studying to understand what is this substance. Okay, so it's a long journey from a long, long time ago. And then they come up with oxide eventually because a scientist F. W. N. managed to um, isolate this compound from the oxygen. Okay, so it is um, from the Greek word. The name it means to grow oxygen. However, it was first found apparently in human urine. Remember, okay, um, some compounds in you are also present in plant, vice versa, but not necessarily they are function the same. Just because oxygen is in you doesn't mean that you can grow leaf. 
right? Okay. And the term Austin is applied to the IAA. This is the first one. There are many types of auxin. Remember, auxin is a class of hormone. Under auxin, there are many members. One type of auxin that is found naturally is called IAA, indole acetic acid, indole free acetic acid. There are many, okay? And if you go to agriculture shop, Kedai Pertanian, if you buy the rooting hormone, read at the back of the label, you will see that one of the synthetic compounds used by the manufacturer as a rooting hormone is actually IAA. There are many more. It can be IAA, it can be IBA, it can be NAA. You'll see in a bit. There are various uh, samples. <coughs> You got your notes right? Have you got your notes? What? Takkan tak ada? Tak full? Kenapa tak full? Kenapa print one page? So tak ada? Redo balik, redo balik. No, give, whenever give, give to somebody else, explain. This is the problem with the quota, explain. <coughs> okay, how, how they isolate the oxygen? Okay. Um, it seems like oxygen can move from the top to bottom. This is the properties of oxygen. And this is called polar transport. Polar means from one end to another. So scientists, they, they cut this coleoptile and then they place this, the tip of the coleoptile on the agar. So whatever compound, if it's true, it can move, as they hypothesized in the past, will fill the agar at the bottom. Okay, And that's what they did. And then they move this agar on the decapitated tip of the oxide. And it seems that even without the original coleoptile tip, the seedling will still follow the light tropism. Even it has been cut. Can you function if you cut a head? No. Um, um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is the, the, the more detailed uh, explanation of what actually happened. Okay. Again, control, nothing happened. If you uh, put empty agar, nothing happened. If you put agar that has been infused with signals from a coleoptile, then you will see that it can actually produce um, some effects. Okay? So, this, this is interesting. It, it shows that the even without a circulation system like human, you have circulation system, right? What's that, Emily? System peredaran darah, circulatory system. The oxygen can still travel from one place to another. And mind you, this is not due to gravity. No. This is due to polar transport. It requires energy, actually. Okay? So... Why does it bend towards the light? What, the, what actually happens? So apparently, when you give light from one side, the oxygen, this is the characteristic of oxygen, oxygen will shy away from the light. It will go towards the side of the seedling that is shaded from the light. So when this happens, and remember, okay, this is only specific for the shoot tip, not root. Shoot. Root, different story. For the shoot, the oxygen will shy away from the light and it will cause the site with the highest concentration to grow longer. And this is why it's bending. This is why you are getting phototropism.
So if you measure it, the centimeter will be higher than this guy here. Right? <clears throat> so how is the question still remains? How auxin is causing the cell to grow longer? We'll see in a bit. Okay, these are, these are the type of auxin that I was telling you about. So um, usually in agriculture, we, we divide the auxin into two families. The auxin itself is a category. Under that category, you've got two families. The natural family and the synthetic family. So natural auxin, like the one that you saw earlier, IAA. Okay, and then you've got the synthetic auxin, IBA. NAA and 240. Have you taken your wheat science? Okay, if you have take, you take your wheat science, you will learn a type of herbicide. And you will see that the name is the same, 240. That herbicide is actually auxin. Okay? So, where auxin is produced in plants, shoot and root step tips, the apical meristem, young expanding leaf, young seeds. So, this is to highlight my earliest statement. Hormones in plants are not produced in glands. Tidak dihasilkan di dalam kelenjar. Hormon di dalam tumbuhan tidak dihasilkan di dalam kelenjar. No. It's being produced, for the case of auxin, in various places. So it's a bit different than you, okay? So what, what, what's, the, what's the wisdom behind this? Why? It has to do something with the circulatory system. You have circula circulatory system. You have your pituitary gland, thyroid gland, producing all these hormones, right? The growth hormones. So the growth hormone being produced in your pituitary gland, inside somewhere, inside here, it can somehow reach the tip of your toe. How? Gravity? Yeah. Circulatory, circulatory system. Okay. Plants do not have that. So it's a good idea to have the oxygen factories in various places. Natural oxygen, synthetic oxygen. Okay. So um, please remember this. And these are the further... Uh, chemical structure of this auxin. I do expect you to know the full name of this. Okay? IAA, IBA, indolbutyric acid, NAA, naphthalene acetic acid, and so on. Because I could see that some students, agriculture students, when they go to buy hormones, since never learned about the full name, just depending on the abbreviation, IAA, NAA, ended up buying the wrong things. And the experiment had to be terminated all completely. Repeat semester, repeat year and everything. So, but ignore it. You just rely on the abbreviation without reading the labels. Do not do that. Abbreviation can mean anything. Okay? If I say this, what's that? Okay, thank God it's Friday. What else can it be? It can be anything actually. It can be anything. You know, you know the, the image GIF? The animated image, so this can be there as well. Transpose. Transpose gives me, meaning that my point is the abbreviations can be used in any disciplines. So you need to know the context first. So that's why please know the full chemical name of the things that you are dealing with. Okay? Abbreviation just to help you with the quick communication, right? 
Okay, so these are the chemical components, just in case you you don't need to know the all the ring structure. You just need to know the name of the chemical name. All right. Okay. This this is important. So when you're talking about hormones or any compounds in plant, there is a universal um, signal. Is it signal? It's not signal. Universal um, symbol that you know, need to know. People use two symbol. This is known as to stimulate. This is to inhibit. And this is pretty much universal. Okay? So when you, you see this, auxin, what, the, what effect does it have on the phototrophism? Is it stimulating or inhibiting? No. Stimulating or inhibiting? Stimulating. What about in the senescence? It is inhibiting. Okay, so please understand the concept. So it's, it's good. You don't have to write. No. You can just use all this symbol. Stimulating, inhibiting. Stimulating, inhibiting. Okay. <clears throat> About the polar transport in oxygen. Okay. So this is the polar transport in oxygen. Um, two terminologies you need to understand when it comes to this lesson of polar transport. Okay. <clears throat> Bessy petal. And acro petal, basi petal, and acro petal. You have a plant. Your plant is divided into two sections: the shoot system and the root system. The movement of compounds, not only hormones. That's why I want to stress it now. It, it is it, it's applicable to any movement of substance in plants. The movement of the substance can be basipetally or acro, acro, acropetally. Basipetal, the, how I want to say, the kampong word for it is um, a word um, toward Toward base, toward oh. so basic petal. Let's see. Um, it's not. It's not clear for somehow that. <coughs> do, do you have the note with you? That that have this. No, is it not printed? Even even this screen is is, is not this. <clears throat> so let's say that your um, your oxygen is produced at the tip. Your oxygen can can travel from the top to bottom, like in this case here, from the top here to the bottom. So top to the bottom, this movement is called basi petal towards the base. The base of what? Here is the important part. This, can you see the junction here? The root, there is a junction that acts like a boundary between the shoot system and the root system. Okay? So, that junction is the final destination for the shoot or root region. So, from the top to the bottom. Okay? It doesn't continue that way from, from, from this point forward. For example, I'll, I'll, I'll better I'll draw it in case you focus the blur. So you have your shoot, right? So from the top to here, it's called basi petali towards base or 
top to bottom. And this, this is the final destination, the junction here. The same terminology is also used if you are talking about the tip of the root here towards the base. This is all so-called Bessie petal. Do not continue to have this go towards this way. No, that is incorrect. Okay. We are talking about the tip now. Now, for the root system, root tip is the top. For the shoot system, shoot tips is the top. So we are talking about the direction of the movement. Right? Okay. So acropetal is the opposite direction of it. If it goes towards the top, bottom to top, it's called acropetal. And for this, the acropetal is from the ground surface to the tip of the root. This is acropetal. Bottom to top. Where is the bottom? The junction. The junction on the ground. Okay? Please have that information in your head correctly. Okay. We see how oxin does it. So we know that the oxin for, for the shoot, positive tropism. This is shoot, okay? Not the root, the shoot. It will bend when there is a light coming towards it. Why? We need to understand why. So here's the mechanism. Um, oh, sorry. The mechanism is actually here. Oh, sorry. So this is the, the effects of the oxygen to the shoot, and this is the effect of oxygen to the root. Oxygen on the shoot causing positive phototropism. Oxygen on the root causing positive gravitropism. And the effect is opposite. Not opposite, I'll show you why. You learn just now, when there is light, oxygen will go to the shaded side and it will start to bend this is for shoot for the root for the root tip it's the opposite root that grows downward will have all of the oxygen concentrated in the root cap this is the root cap okay so and then this oxygen will start to can you see this arrow here? This arrow shows that the oxygen actually originates from the shoot. And then it grows downward due to polar transport. Some oxygen is still produced in the root tips, but much of it actually comes from the top. Okay? So when it reaches the root cap, some of the oxygen in the form of IAA here will start to Exit and go back up. So originally, it goes acropetal, go to the down. And then when it exit at the root cap, it will go up, basipetally. And this will cause the elongation in the root elongation zone. Remember when you learn botany, roots have different section, right? What? meristematic section, elongation se section, and also the maturity section. Okay, So this thing happened because of this guy here, Statolith. Have you heard that word before? Okay. I, I'll, try, I'll try to make it simple because um, I think last semester, there's, there's a uh, lecturer asking me about this. <laughs> Even they cannot understand it. Why? Why, why is it opposite uh, from, from the shoot? <clears throat> so when the root is, you put it downward, that's fine. But what if you put it on the side way, horizontal? Like in this manner. Why now is it bending? 
there is no light here. Why? This is underground, okay? Super dark. So the reason is, when the root is placing this way, the statolis, statolis is the stone. Starch stone. Star to leaf. Leaf is the Greek main stone. Star starch. Starch. Batu. Batu kanji. <coughs> so the stones, which is only present at the cap of the root, at the tip of the shoot, no stato leaf. Okay? Whoever put it labeled like that, ah, memang aku nak this is only for the root, okay? So the stones that is present in the root cap, when you place it this way, the root, it will start to deposit on one side of the root in this manner. So when this happens, it causes the IAA, the auxin, to accumulate on this side. When this happens, the other side of the root, which is away from the gravity, gravity is this, the top is away from the gravity, this top will have less oxygen. More oxygen, less oxygen. Why? Because statolis pulling towards the gravity. Statolis is very dense, okay? You can think, think of like a metal bit. So it's, it's pulling everything to the downward side. So when this happens, the oxygen will cause the side that has the most concentration to grow slower. So this is opposite from the shoot. The side that has the less oxygen will actually grow faster. You see? This is opposite from the shoot. The shoot is to cause positive phototropism. For the gravity tropism, due to the presence of statolith, the side that contains the most oxygen will grow slower. Okay, why? <coughs> Actually, until today, I don't see any paper or uh, literature describing fully what, what's happening. They try, but the, the, the knowledge is not definite yet. So maybe you can be the one finding out why. I think the reason is this. When, when oxygen is too much, it's actually causing the cells to become super acidic. You see, one, one properties of oxygen... Oh, yeah. One properties of oxygen is it cause, it's, it's causing hydrogen pump to pump a lot of hydrogen into the cell wall. When you have more hydrogen, acidity will increase, meaning that the pH will go down. So when, when one side has a lot of oxygen for, in the case of root, too much of good things, too much, too much of oxygen, it will become too acidic. If it's only slightly acidic, that is good. Cell wall is acidic, it is loosened, it can grow. Now, when it's just too much, it cannot grow, it actually dampening growth. Yeah, so I think that's what go what's going on, all right, okay? In case you are wondering, I, I look like some of you thinking, like thinking far, far away. I know you have learned biology. If you learn biology, if you learn about hearing, you are, maybe you are thinking about another word similar to this. It's called otolith. This is for hearing. In your, in your ears, you got batu as well. That is for balance. Autoleaf. The stone in the plants, it's for gravity sensing. Okay? <clears throat> All right. So, th this is the acid hypothesis that I was telling you about. So, when you have oxygen, oxygen stimulates hydrogen pump. Okay, this is your cell, cell wall, and lush here, okay? Hydrogen will be pumped more into the cell wall side. 
inside the cell wall due to the presence of auxins. And when this happens, cell wall will become loosened. You know, some, some, uh, when you ferment something, when things get too acidic, it will soften the tissue. So the same effect. So when this happens, the plants can allow the cell wall to elongate. That's why you get growth. However, I think due too much of the acidity for the root tip, too much of acid, what's going to happen? Is it going to be good thing or bad thing? Yeah. Too much of a good thing, too much acidity, slowing the growth. Okay? <clears throat> and auxin also acting like a signal molecule, meaning that when auxin is being detected by a receptor, there are many receptors on the plasma membrane. One receptor can, probably can only listen to one signal. So there is a specific signal for auxin. So when this signal detects auxin, in the case here, it will cause a cascade reaction in the plant. This is how you get a specific gene expression. The auxin itself is not causing the plant to grow like crazy, no. It is not a direct effect but rather acting like a signal transduction. Auxin, detected by the receptor. Receptor causes a number of reactions in the plant, and then eventually some transcription takes place in the nucleus, and eventually transcription, translation, and synthesis, you get a growth protein, right? Okay. So, to quickly recap, two ways how auxin cause growth. Number one is the acid hypothesis. Acid growth hypothesis is causing hydrogen to be pumped more into one side. Who's pumping the, the hydrogen? Prot proton pump, that's the name. When you, whenever you see this, H plus here, don't say H plus. That's not how you say it. We call it proton. Proton pump. Proton, positive or negative? That's why it's called proton. Okay. And the second way is to trigger the production of growth protein by the action of sig signal transduction. Okay. At your level, that's all you need to know. All right? Okay, so beside growth, auxin also have a number of um, uh, effects. So these are the effects that we, actually you can see we're quite easily around you. Apical dominance, patinocropy, and herbicide. So apical dominance, I think this is what you see easily if you are helping somebody doing the garden or you're doing gardening yourself. You have a plant, you start trimming the plant, Pruning, what's pruning in Malay? Chankas. Chankas? Hankas. <laughs> after, after about two, three weeks, it gets bushier. Dia jadi lebih bushier. How do you say that? Um, ah, merimbun, mer merendam. Why? Because apical dominance has been removed. You see? When auxin is active, right at the tip here, it is causing the meristem on the side. Plus have meristem on both sides of it, left side and right side. But they are sleeping. The meristem, the shoot meristem are sleeping. But the moment you remove the tip, the top auxin, all of this sleeping meristem on the left and right side will be awakened. Once it is awakened, that's why you get the bushy plants. Dia jadi lebih merimbun, merendam. You just did something which is called apical dominance remover. Okay, apical dominance. I should know that in Malay. 
ke nak merepek kan ni kan ke dominan apical maybe that ok the second effect of auxin extra effect of auxin is patinocopy so patinocopy is actually the pro, the the development of fruit without fertilization usually in order for you to get fruit male and female gamete has to meet up and the fuse get fertilized and then the ovary will enlarge the ovules will become two seeds ovule becoming seeds ovary becoming fruits that's the normal way to do it but <coughs> in some fruits if you spray certain oxygen i'm not saying iaa there are many other oxygens remember it can bypass fertilization to get fruit and this is how you get seedless fruit because the fruits can now enlarge the ovary can enlarge because remember that is one effect of auxin cell enlargement it will enlarge and then you get your fruit even without the fertilization and this is called patinocopy okay and one example you see here is tomato usually tomato unpollinated and that does no fertilization takes place the flowers just withered and die away but if you spray some kind of auxin the ovary even without the fertilization it will continue to grow and do all the enlargement and development and you got your tomato when you cut open the tomato do not be surprised if you don't find any seeds because this is patinocopy okay and finally oxygen in higher concentration can also add as herbicide okay that is the uh, 240d that you saw earlier to control the weeds in agriculture and horticulture and also in the past of course in the war the nickname for it it's called agent orange for some reason um to defoliate trees during vietnam war why otherwise you cannot see your your enemy your enemy is hiding in the canopy so they use this auxin in high concentration not iaa different kind of auxin to cause plants to wither and die and of course this is during war now in the present time we use it to control weeds okay how does it work well it's pretty much like too much of good things again when the plant is growing uncontrollably what will happen the cell dividing super fast the cells elongating super fast it will collapse it will collapse and eventually everything will be broken and the plant will die so that's why it's a good uh, herbicide okay this has been um, a ban because it's causing of uh, various um, nasty effects uh, on the humans okay cancer miscarriage birth defects and so on all right okay yay and that's all about oxygen yay not lagi ha you got apa lagi banyak ada gibberellin ssc athelin okay so today only about oxygen okay so go, go go back and make a lot of prayer because you have other hormone classes to worry about all right okay okay uh any question any question oops all good okay uh if that is the case i'll see you again on wednesday go to the lab i want to see whatever assignment that i have assigned to you all the data if you have the data will completely looks okay on the excel remember you still have not done your test one i need to look at your excel first okay once you're done with that i'm very sure somebody some group still not not following instruction make sure everything looks as instructed uh, some group okay 
getting there, getting there, getting there. Susah susah sangat tu nak follow instruction. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Is my English that bad? Um, so do it. All right. Okay. No question. All good. Can I ask question? Can I ask question? Give me two names of oxen. Apa yang penting? Kau kau baru belajar. Oxid is a class of hormones. Bagus contoh. Apa pun nama oxin? Dua. Kalau saya itu saya tahu lah oxin. Tak nak cari aku nak nama. Pat. Tak sampai tak sampai sehari belajar. Baru depan ni. Apa? Do you want to point to any friend that you think can help you? Point. Where? Who do you think can help you? This is the time to 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 take back all the grudges. Who? Ah, ni. Alhamdulillah. You know what? Now in my head, the name the name of this guy is ovulot ovulating boy. Sebab dia takut sangat jadi perempuan kan? Give me two names of oxy that you know. Maybe IAA and 240. IAA, that's a for what? Indol 3 acetic acid. Okay. 240? 240, 24. Depan tu tulis lah. Okay, that's good. So, uh, so which one is synthetic? Which one is natural? IAA uh, natural. Okay. 240 synthetic. Good. Good. Ah, macam tu. Kau tahu benda. Okay. Alright. So, I'll see you on Wednesday. And thank you for coming. Where's, where's the red? <laughs>